Hey guys, welcome to another character creator tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about conforming character clothing. So to avoid issues like the character's body breaking through the clothing mesh, we're going to show you how to fix that in this tutorial. So we're going to start off with this female character, just with your basic underwear set. And what I'm going to do is try to create a mesh breakage issue uh, to start off. So let's go ahead and make sure we have our morph uh, gizmo on. I'm going to select the character's uh, bust here and just click and drag and make it a little bit larger. And you can see we have an issue there that occurs right away where the mesh is breaking through or the character's body is breaking through the clothing mesh. So we need to try to resolve this. And the easiest way to do that is going to our, going to our conform panel up here. It's gonna, that's where we're gonna be spending most of our time. So let's go ahead and select the bra item and then select conform. Now we're gonna talk about collision settings first where we have iteration, subdivision level, and margin. So let's go ahead and uh, check out the help file first. We can go to help and online manual. If you want, if you want more details about these, you can always go to your about character cloth. Uh, I believe it's dressing the character. Yep, and then conforming character clothing down here. So if you want, if you want more details on iteration and subdivision, you can just check out this section down here. Uh, subdivision is essentially just uh, you know adding additional vertexes to better conform to your character's body shape. But you can always check out this page here for more information. Let's just go ahead and close that down right now. And you can see we already have some values in the collision settings. Uh, iteration value of one, subdivision uh, value of two. So let's go ahead and select calculate collision. And when we do that, basically that resolves most of our issues there already. You can try it again. And there is a little bit of a modification up here because uh, when you calculate the collision, it's incremental. So it'll try and uh, get better at uh, the collision each time. But you can see now we still have a couple issues here. Now what we can try to do is we can try to increase the iteration and subdivision levels. Let's take the iteration level up to three and the subdivision level up to three as well, and then try to recalculate the collision now. And when we do that, you can see we've resolved uh, all of our issues. Most of our issues, we still have a couple of little peak, uh, peak threes right here. You know, if you get something small like that, you can just try to increase the size slightly on your character, uh, just to like 0.10, for example, and that'll fix all of our issues right there. And it looks fine and dandy. If you don't want to increase the size, there's additional measures you can take. So we can take the size back down to zero, close it down. Now you can see that our uh, the breasts are kind of jagged along the edges here, which isn't really uh, very realistic. So what we want to try and do is smooth that out. You can do that really easily by selecting your bra, going to Edit and Real-Time Smooth. And that'll actually create additional geometry and it'll smooth out your character's uh, bra. And that normally resolves the issues there as well. So you can see that we don't have any issues any longer and the breasts, uh, the curvature of the breasts are a lot smoother. Now that's one pretty simple way to, uh, you know, obviously fix most, uh, most issues, most issues will be able to be fixed uh, just by doing that, uh, using a combination of the, the margin. Uh, I forgot to mention the margin, by the way, if you go to conform, the margin is basically the distance between one mesh and the other. So if you create a margin of like one, for example, that'll be a distance of one unit between the character's actual skin mesh and the clothing mesh. So generally that uh, is, is a, value you can use to increase the uh, accuracy of your collision shapes as well. Let's go ahead and close this down first of all though. And now we're going to talk about custom opacity maps for your character's skin. And to do that, I'm going to go over here to our projects. And we're just going to use this base female character with a dress. We don't want to save this project. And let's do the exact same thing. Let's uh, increase the bus size just because it's pretty much the easiest way to adjust your character or to create mesh uh, breakage. So we'll do the same thing again. You can see this time we don't have any issue. And you're probably wondering why that is. This is because this clothing item right here covers the entire character's body. And we have a little secret up here. If we go to, if we select our uh, dress and we go to conform, we have a little secret right here where we have an option to hide inner mesh. If I deselect that hide inner mesh, then you'll see some breakage. Maybe not right now, but let's go enhance them a little further, make it a little larger as well. And there you go. We have a little bit of breakage right there. And that's because if we deselect hide inner mesh, let's select our dress and activate the appearance editor first. What happens with this dress is if we go to our dress and we go to effects and procedural holes, we can enable that and just, you know, spread it out a little bit. You can see that we have, you know, character a mesh, character body underneath. However, if we go to conform and we select hide inner mesh, what that's going to do is every area that's covered by the character's dress, it's going to hide that area, hide most of the areas rather. In this case, it's the midsection. Now, if your claw, if your uh, dress doesn't have any holes in it, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that. It's a really easy shortcut um, to avoid getting any mesh breakage. 
But for instance, if you do have character, you know, holes in the character's shirt, if it's like an old shirt or something, then you'll have to find a different way to get around it. So let's deselect hide inner mesh right now. And let's uh, disable our procedural holes. And let's try to fix these issues right here without hiding the inner mesh. Now, again, we could use the calculate collision option again. That's probably the fastest way to do it. But if you have an issue that's very stubborn in, in this case, what we can do is go to our, uh, make sure we select our actor, go up to our materials up here, and we want to find our actor body. So skin body right here. And we're going to create a custom skin opacity map. So we're going to make this area of the body, the character's body, transparent. So if the hole was down here, for example, on the hip, we would still see the hip, but we had no holes right here. So we don't need to worry about the opacity of the skin in this area. Let's go ahead and launch the UV map for our character's skin. Now this creates, uh, this opens up a bunch of different images. Uh, we don't need to worry about fingernails. We don't need to worry about skin head. We need to worry about uh, body toenail or these eyelashes right here. We only need to worry about this body skin right here. Let's zoom in a little bit and you can see that these are the character's legs all the way up to here. And those are the uh, armpits there. And these, this area right here is the breasts and the arms, of course, right here. So what we want to do is create a custom opacity map. Now, it's not too difficult to do that in this case because we only have to focus on this one area on the bottom of the breast there. So let's go ahead, create ourselves a layer. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and fill this layer with white. So I'm going to select my color swatch and use my fill tool over here, paint bucket tool, and fill it with white. We just need to, we don't need to worry about seeing that right now. We'll just take that off. And I want to create an additional layer, one more layer here. And this is the layer where I'm going to add my black. So let's go ahead and make sure my color swatch is at black and make sure I have my, you know, paintbrush or whatever you want selected. And let's zoom in on the, you can see the breast shape right here. So all we need to do is paint over top of the bottom, like kind of area of the breast right there, just like this. You can go ahead and uh, paint over that like this. And this, this area here is the armpit. So you don't want to get too close to the armpit in a lot of cases. It really depends on which dress you have. So let's do something like this. I think that should be fine. It looks like a little mustache or something. And, you know, just to be safe, we can bring it up a little bit over here as well. And this is going to be the area that is transparent on my character's skin. So let's go ahead and keep it like that. And then disable the background layer, just enable the layer one. So this is our opacity map right here. Just a little mustache is what it looks like. All we need to do is go ahead and select file and save as. And we're going to save this opacity map as a PNG and we'll save it to our desktop and we'll just call it uh, awesome, whoops, awesome opacity. There we go. And save that. And we'll just go ahead with these options. Okay. And we'll close down Photoshop. We don't need to save this right now. And then what I want to do is load on this opacity map to my character. So the easiest way to do that is go to my uh, appearance editor right here, make sure my actor is selected. And I want to go to skin body and under skin body, we have a miscellaneous section right here and we have a section for body opacity. Very simple, just one single input map. So let's go ahead and double click that and load in our awesome opacity map right there. And you can see when we do that, basically what it does is it makes that part of my character's body transparent. So for example, we selected our character's dress right here and just deleted it. This is what I did with that custom opacity map. So I made this area of my character's body transparent. Now, if it's covered with a dress, that's not a problem. We don't need to see it anyways. Let's just control Z and undo that. And that's pretty much the way you do it uh, with your custom opacity map. Not too difficult. Let's just select the dress and we can also, you know, real time smooth it out as well. And there you go. Things look a lot better right there. So let's move on and talk about size and smoothing and close fitting. Let's go ahead and load our base male character for this. Uh, we don't need to save that. So let's go ahead and make this guy a little bit stronger. So he already has clothing. Again, I told you best practices to modify the body before you add the clothing, but we're rebels. We're going to try something different. Let's go to our body morphs and under body morphs, we should have a strong male right here. Let's just double click that, make this guy strong and we can go to our morphs and make him even stronger as well. If we go to like currently used, for example, we can increase the bodybuilder right there and just, you know, really jack this guy up. And you can see we're starting to have some breakage through the back here. We can, you know, increase the body build even further and get more breakage or less breakage. Now, you know, generally you'd want to be reasonable with your uh, proportions and not do it too crazy, but uh, we can use that for now. And so this can be resolved pretty easily by just selecting our, I uh, will twirl down the character there, selecting his shirt, 
conforming. And we can probably use these values right there. If that doesn't work, we can use a value of like something like a two and three. There you go. And that resolves that. So let's take a look first at the outfit settings then. We're going to talk about close fitting and smooth. So look at this shirt, for example. It's fairly tight fitting onto the character's body. You can see a lot of the uh, contours in the clothing are, you know, very tight fit to the character's body. What smoothing does is smoothing kind of relaxes that. It makes it more like a relaxed type of look for your cloth. So let's go ahead to smoothing. It sets smoothing to the maximum value of 5 right there. And then recalculate the collision. So you can see when I do that, we get a bit of a smoother appearance uh, for the cloth. It's not so tight onto the character's body. But then we get these issues back here. So we have to like uh, find a way to fix these issues. We can try selecting the increasing the margin to something like uh, 1, for example. And that will resolve that issue. So we're uh, pretty we're pretty much good to go right here. Uh, what we can do is, uh, if you want to keep these values, you like the way things are right now, but you still want to do some modifications, but you want to keep these original values, you can reset back to default, which is the original ones, which is what we don't want to do right now. Or we can just select Save as Default. And that will save these values here as the default values. So you can always return to these later on. So for example, if we wanted to uh, add close fitting, because we're going to talk about that next, you know, increase the value to close, uh, close fitting five, calculate collision. You can see we get a closer fitting shirt. We have, uh, you know, no breakage issues right there. And that's fine and dandy. So we can conform again, take off the close fitting, take the close fitting back down to zero. Or we can just go ahead and select reset to default uh, down here as well. And that'll reset to the values that we previously had. And it looks like there's a little breakage issue up there. So we can go ahead up here and uh, let's try the close fitting again. We can, I think it was a value of five that we had, calculate the collision. And that seemed to fix it. So we have the, you know, closer fit. This guy really likes his uh, tight fit clothing right there. And then if we want, of course, we can always go up to edit and uh, real time smooth and smooth it out even further. It doesn't really have an effect in this case, but that's something that you can uh, try if you uh, have additional issues. And what the last thing you want to do is try some calibration uh, poses here as well. We can get, give this guy some calibration poses right here. Just a, a ballerina pose and this one right here. The gym is that way. This guy's so, uh, so built. So then take a quick look around your character, make sure there's no uh, breakage issues and everything looks fine and dandy in this case. All right, another quick example here is when you're layering clothing as well, you may come across a similar issue. So we're using this female character right now and I'm going to show you how you can uh, layer clothing. Now some items might conflict with each other, uh, others you can layer them uh, simply just by cl double clicking and adding them to your scene. Let's go ahead and add a shirt to our character first. We'll go into shirts and let's go into essential clothing. And we'll add one of these uh, camisoles here, this uh, camisole A. And that'll just add over top of my character's underwear. You can see currently we don't have uh, any issues. It looks uh, fine. And on top of the camisole, we can actually add a t-shirt as well. We can add one of these shirts down here. Let's just go ahead and add maybe this uh, t-shirt A, for example. And that'll go on top of the camisole. If you look over here in the hierarchy, let's just uh, twirl this down so we can see it. You can see we have the camisole and the t-shirt and the underwear bottoms and the bra. So you can always see all of your items there. And it looks like we still have no breakages here, so we're fine. And we can go ahead and add in uh, a bottom as well. Let's go to the uh, pants down here in essential clothing. We have some female uh, short shorts we can add in. Let's just go ahead and add these ones. I like these ones right here. Um, so once we add these ones in, we may experience some breakage. Doesn't look like it in this case, so maybe just over here. Um, where the uh, belt loop is kind of going through the shirt. So in that case, just select your shirt, go to conform and calculate collision again. And pretty much it'll fix it right off the bat for you um, within a few clicks. So I think we're good to go there. And then on top of the shirt, you can even add a uh, cardigan as well by going to uh, coats over here, uh, essential clothing. We'll just add one of these uh, cardigans. I like this uh, plain blue cardigan here. We'll just add that on top of the shirt. And if we spin around here, everything is looking fine and dandy right here. So if you have a character, you know, where you're not modifying the size after you apply the clothing, you shouldn't normally have much of a problem um, normally. And if you do, just use that simple solution. And then I think we can add one more layer to this. Now, if you go into skirts, skirts will conflict with pants. So you can't add skirts and pants on the same character. So for example, if I went to uh, um, essential clothing or skirts essential clothing and I wanted to add this mini skirt, what that'll do is that'll take away my uh, my short shorts there and it'll replace it with the mini skirt instead. So you can see now we no longer have those shorts, but we do have this mini skirt. And also mini skirts, uh, you can use the full body dresses on top of mini skirts and pants as well. So if I, you know, selected, I wanted to add in this uh, 
polka dot dress, for example, that will go over top of my skirt, but underneath my t-shirt and my uh, cardigan there. So you can see the mini skirt popping through. Um, you know, generally you'd probably want to avoid using the mini skirt and the dress together. Uh, let's go ahead and try to load in some of the uh, pants here. So we'll use the same low rise shorts that we had before. And what that'll do is that'll take out the dress or take out the mini skirt rather and load in the shorts. And you can see there's some breakage through uh, at the back there. I don't know why you'd want to wear jeans over top of, or underneath a dress, but uh, if you want to do it, this is how you'll fix it. Uh, just select your uh, dress item here. Calculate collision. Just calculate collision over uh, on the item that is on the top layer. And uh, that should normally do the trick. And you can see once we do that, then we have to recalculate the cardigan. So we can select the cardigan here. Uh, calculate collision one more time. And that should normally fix it right there. And then we can go ahead and uh, zoom out. We have this uh, totally mismatched outfit. But uh, just kind of trying to show an example here of the, uh, of the layering. And then you can go ahead and add in some of these uh, high heels. I think these ones would be fine. Possibly the worst color coordination in, in the history of outfits, but uh, that's all there is to it uh, for layering. So uh, that's basically it for this tutorial. Again, just wanted to show you a few examples of conforming clothing to your character's bodies and also how you can work with uh, layering and, and fun stuff like that. So again, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you next time.